Hello there, just a quick one here. How to gently recover from the dreaded extruder blob. I see a lot of these at a local makerspace, but it's always noise and irritating to film there, so finally, I have one in my very own shop. This particular blob is coming up. I've been tweaking the auto retractor on the belt ejection module, and while I thought I had it working pretty well, it clearly failed to eject here. I really need a day or two to sit near the machine and observe how it's working, but life's been pretty busy lately. It took me a little longer than it should have for me to remember that I can just record time lapses and watch them after the fact to see what failed, but anyways, blam. Ejection fail, and the next print starts the angry spaghetti. Quick side note, there's a few solutions to this problem that will prevent nozzle globs from happening in the first place, and right now they're already out there on high-end printers. My bamboo, for example, has a camera watching the print, and evaluating what it sees for spaghetti. This technique is also available to any printer through Obico. You need to throw a Raspberry Pi or a other camera on there. It used to be called the Spaghetti Detect, which I like the name better, but it's now Obico. I'm actually using it on some of my other minis, but this guy's hiding over in the shop. For those solutions, you need processing power not available on your printer. Bamboos is only in the cloud, and Obico will provide it in the cloud for you or let you host the detective locally but it's also a machine more powerful than a Pi. The Prusa XL can detect this sort of thing using the load cell built into its extruder, the same sensitive probe that it uses for bed leveling, and some clever firmware. Advances in stepper drivers and processing speed on the regular printers should have stepper drivers themselves detecting skip steps. The XL does this as well, and some other printers are starting to add that feature. It's nice there that you can stop the printer with the hardware that it already came with, and the path towards a more user-friendly printer. However, it's not going to help us in this case. I think that's clogged enough for the demonstration, don't you? Alright, so to remove a blob like this, slow and steady is the name of the game. First off, inspect it. Is there damage to the wiring? If there is, if it's bad enough, it's all around in there, you might want to swap out the entire hot end. You can always clean up that hot end outside the printer if you want to reuse parts from it. There isn't any major damage here, so I'm going to set the extruder to 160 Celsius and wait. This is PET-G on there. I'm going to wait patiently. I I also like to add some weights to the blob to help it drop off on its own. The idea is that you're slowly pulling pressure and melting the plastic from the inside out to do as little damage to the existing extruder as possible. If you try to rush this process, if you try to speed it up, you're basically going to damage your components and have to replace more parts. That was pretty painless, uh, more painless than usual, which I attribute to the design of the Revo here. The heater being a cylinder and no major ledges on the nozzle means that I could probably clean this up and get back to printing, but personally I err on the side of reliability on my printers, so I'm going to be replacing at least the heater core. The Revo design reminds me of my first hot end. I think Maker Gear made the kit for this geezer, and I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's got a cool heater core. The thermistor used to be taped to the nozzle itself. This guy had a terrible target melt zone, but back then extruders were chunky geared monstrosities that pushed 3mm filament. That was good times. Made this guy myself. There. Nichrome wire on a threaded insert, covered in fire clay. Anyway. Really, the amazing thing is how well this worked, and also how much farther along we've come. With the Revo, you remove the entire filament path, so it's not built around a single threaded heat core, like this old uh, Maker Gear here. And that means you can take out any clogged filament, and most clogs, even ones this bad, are pretty easy to remedy. Another nice thing about the Revo, you just unplug the two connectors and... huh. 
you know, it'd be nice if they keyed the connectors, made them different, so that you can't plug in the heater to the thermistor and vice versa. But, of course, no printer is going to fail to detect a lack of thermistor, so it's not a big issue. It still seems like a missed opportunity. I think I'd rather have one connector, too. I suppose you could replace the heater separately from the thermistor, but I almost never do one without the other, just because the time and maintenance it takes costs more than these parts. For the same reason, if the wires leading up to the extruder fail, I'm usually going to replace everything in that cable bundle, just so I don't have to visit again for a long time. It's even less of an issue when you leave your printer plugged in while working on it, which I guess I should tell you not to do, but, I mean, who's got that kind of time? Anyways, a little test extrusion and this guy is good to go. I'm gonna pop off here and check my stock of beds. I'm debating what to put on there for the next bed test, but until then, happy printing.